Welcome everybody to another edition of TW 2020 as we're continuing our TCW 2016 in TW 2020 series. And again, shout out to Broken Psycho who did this mod. Uh, but anyway, um, we start off our second week of Total Wrestling with Rocky Golden coming down to the ring and cutting a freaking awesome promo where he basically, you know, puts over, you know, the, his fight to become world champion again, that he never lost the belt to Golden, and that like last, you know, last night he pinned Aaron like last week, he pinned Aaron Andrews one, two, three in the middle of the ring, and there's nothing Andrew can say about it. And if he finally gets a shot one on one with Andrews at Malice in Wonderland, he it will be the beginning of another golden era in Total Championship Wrestling. So let me just actually book that officially. So it's Rocky versus Aaron. World title on the line. Then we go to our opening match, which is a pretty decent match as any bout that DC Arnold crowd, but still power wrestling. Jay Cord defeats Bart Biggins in 12.50 by pinfall of Craig Apollo Driver. So, you know, this is back and forth. You know, Cord is a really good wrestler, but Bart Biggins is, you know, a former champion here in TCW. You know, and they fight back and forth, but Cord's a little better. Slips in, hits the patent Cord Cradle Pile Driver, and gets the 1, 2, 3 pinfall victory. And, you know, uh, so Cord gets a 60, Bart Biggins is a 54. Um, and then we move on to our J. Court does a has an in-ring where he cuts a promo on Money Mo saying, you know, I am the future of professional wrestling. I'm I'm the can't miss big prospect. And I've been wrestling and I've been fighting with you, Mighty Mo, for over a year. And I want it to be done. And Malice in Wonder One, I want you not only false count anywhere, but I want it to be written in the contract that we can't face each other again in a singles match for the entire calendar year of 2016. Pop for that, and that gets a 59. Uh, then we have an elite backstage promo with Jasmine Sanders, you know, for you know, you know, their vast tag team experience. And that at, um, and that tonight, they're going to show off that experience in the ring versus two young kids known as Divine Fortune. And, you know, Nate Joshua says, you know, sorry, but the party's over, pals. It's time for the elite to make their mark in professional wrestling. Uh, this gets a 47, pretty solid. And the actual match gets a 56. Uh, we're in a terrible match. That's mean. Divine Fortune defeats the Elite in 1030. When Daryl Vine pins an 8 Johnson with the Divine De Dream Drop, this gets a 56. Daryl Vine got a bruised tailbone. Nate Johnson gets a 49. Edge Challenger gets a 56. Chance Fortune gets a 50. And Daryl Devine gets a 49. And then Divine Fortune Celebrate, probably with Divine sort of holding his back. And this gets a 60. Uh, then we go back. Then we have a quick match where any battle that decent from the crowd, but Charles Wrestling. Benny Benson continues his hot streak here in the beginning of his career in Total Championship Wrestling, defeating Joel Bryan in 747 by pinfall. This gets a 56. Uh, Benson gets a 52. Bryan gets a 47. They didn't click. And then, you know, Benson cuts a quick in-ring promo where he says, you know, I've been having a lot of fun here in TCW and I'm glad I get to wrestle as myself. But, you know, I heard last week that Mark Speed you know, says just because he thinks he's an international champion that he can say he's above everybody and that he can make anybody tap or snap. Well, Benson, well, Speed, I'll be your hooker, buddy. So come face me in the ring and let's see who actually taps or what gets snapped. And that gets a 55. Uh, then we have a basically a promo where Wolf Hawkins and Joshua Taylor, after arguing a bit, agree that next week there will be a beat the clock challenge between the both of them and whoever wins the match um, whoever, you know, beats the, the, uh, drawn opponent quicker will get to choose the, um, this, the stipulation for their match at Malice in Wonderland. So I'll go ahead and book the match first, but of course I'm not going to tell you guys what the stipulation is going to be, but it's going to be Wolf Hawkins versus Joshua Taylor. So I'll pre-book that. And this gets an 81, good stuff. And then we have a, another quick squash match, as in about the didn't have much heat in trouble wrestling, Sammy back to be a Jeremy Courtney in 550 up and involved an adrenaline shot. So just, you know, quick squash to put back over. This gets a 68. Back gets a 67. Jeremy Courtney gets a 37. And then uh, as, you know, Vessi is celebrating, I mean, as Bach is celebrating, Brian Vessi comes out of nowhere. Huge German suplex locks in on the Vessi lock until TCW officials drag him off. As he screams at back that he's going to make him he's going to make him pay. 74, solid promo as this continues. 
And then we have a basically a hype package for the Titans as they talk about how they've destroyed all the competition total, in total champion wrestling, even legends like the New Wave, and they're going to hold these tag belts for as long as they want. 59 solid promo, or solid video package slash promo by them, as you know they just get to look scary. And then in our semi-main event, in a belt had DT from the crowd, but subpar wrestling, Troy Tornado defeated Danny Fonzarelli in 1347 by pinfall. It's by using underhand attacks, but basically, like, you know, hits a low blow, hits the brain buster, and gets a pinfall victory over Fonzarelli. And this gets a 66, Tornado gets a 61, Fonzarelli gets a 57, and then Tornado celebrating gets a 71. Then, oh, oh god damn it. Can't believe I did that. That's supposed to be Eddie Peak in the bowels. I accidentally chose Eddie Chandler, and yep, there you go. So let's just pretend that didn't happen. But um bum. So then we have an Aaron Andrews promo on Rocky Gold, and he says, you know, Rocky, I heard you last week, and you won't have all your excuses while you're no longer world champion. But the reality is, I'm the future of Total Championship Wrestling. I'm the future of professional wrestling. That's why I'm the ace. Yes, I didn't pin you for the world title, but you walked into that match knowing that could happen. And now you're whining, whining like a little bitty. Well, I'm also in Wonderland. I'm also in Wonderland. I'm perfectly happy to go aces high on you and make and show you exactly why I'm the world champion and you're not. 81, really good promo. Now we have our main event, which gets us, ooh, ouch, ouch. Not our best match. That's unfortunate. That'll probably sort of sink our, 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 our show here. So about that did not have decent action in the crowd, but Trevor Wrestling, Ricky Dale Johnson, and Giant Tana defeated American Buffalo and Brent Helm 1346 when Ricky Dale Johnson pinned Brent Helm with Southern Justice. So in his return to the ring, team with Giant Tana, uh, you know, it's a brawl, but Ricky Dale is able to get the advantage over Brent Hill and hit his big Southern Justice move. This gets a 68, Giant Tana gets a 47, RDJ gets a 64, Brent Hill gets a 55, American Buffalo gets a 55, and uh, both Buffalo and Tana were uh, tiring at the end, and Johnson and Tana didn't work as a team. Let me see, was there anything else bad? Okay. But then RGJ and Buffalo Brawling gets a 63 to finish things up. So, oh, okay. So we still got a 77. So thank you, Rocky. Thank you, Aaron. And yeah. But like, not our best show, unfortunately. That sort of sucks. Like, that's just unfortunate that that, that happened that way. But you know, what can you do? Let's see if there's any mail. Um, as this all decides to load up. Loading. Gotta love that TW loading. So we got, okay, drug test feeds, drug line injured. First, let's check out old Daryl. Um, okay, yeah, he'll, it's just six days. Um, Storylines. Yeah, okay, all, all the Hita storylines are doing okay. So, and I think, yeah, I think that's it for what to show you guys. So yeah, I'll be back in just a second with the next Total Wrestling. So, see you then. Okay, it's now time for the sec second Total Wrestling of this little taping period we're doing as it's continuing the road on to Malice in Wonderland. And this time it's Aaron Andrews who's opened the show who remains all these people in the Sacramento. How terrible the Kings have been for years upon years, but unlike him, who rose to the top of Total Championship Wrestling incredibly quickly, and at Malice in Wonderland, I will prove to you that I am the true world champion when I pin Rocky Golden to the mat, one, two, three, and you'll get a little preview of that when I pin either Benny Benson or Sandy back tonight later on, along with my great partner, Brian Vesey. 82, really good promo, as we continue on. As in our opening match, in a poor match, Divine Fortune defeated the Canadian Animals in 1238 when Daryl Divine pinned Ed Stone with the Divine Dean Dream Drop, so back and forth match. But Daryl Divine hits, managed to hit Ed Stone with the big, I'm mean, gonna guess that's from some sort of like reverse DDT off a of moonsault or something wacky like that, or some, or some sort of like, like slant, like, you know, or just a, you know, just a reverse DDT by itself. But regardless, Divine hits the big move, um, and they get the, Divine Fortune get the big win. Ed Stone gets a 67, Freddie Huggins is a 62, Chance Fortune gets a 55, and Daryl Divine gets a 63. Good stuff. And then Divine Fortune Celebrating gets a 59 itself. Oh, and uh, I picked Danny instead of Daryl. Uh, gotta stop doing that. Well, just pretend that's Daryl. Anyway, Wolf Hawkins has a quick in-ring where he basically says, you know, bring out his opponent for the Beat the Clock Challenge tonight, and out comes Flying Jimmy Fox. 
So in a quick little match, in a decent match, Wolf Hawkins defeating Fly Jimmy Fox in 731 by Pinwolf with a full full moon rising. So you know Fox gets some like some high spots in the beginning, but eventually you know Hawkins' superior skill wins out, and he is able to hit the full moon rising and get the pinball victory over Fly Jimmy Fox and set the t- set a time of 731 for Joshua Taylor to beat later tonight. And this gets a 60 74. Hawkins with a 77 and Flying Jimmy Fox with a 56. And then Hawkins celebrates, gets a 669. Nice. We move on in a backstage promo with Ricky Dale Johnson as he, you know, goes over to the American Buffalo. Says, you know, Buff, me and, you know, Buffalo, you tried to take me out, but last night you just got a little taste of what's coming to you at, Mal- at Malice in Wonderland. And when I'm done with you, you're going to wish Floyd Goldworthy never talked to you into trying to take me out. So we've got that match as well, which again is something you probably should have guessed. But okay, so Ricky Dale Johnson versus American Buffalo. We'll auto name that. We'll pre-book that, and there you go. And this gets a 66. Solid promo. Uh, then in basically a squash match, Mighty Mo defeats Jeremy Courtney in 539 by pinfall of Plunging Spine Buster. 65 for the uh, match, as Mighty Mo gets a 58, and Jeremy Courtney gets a 42. And then Mo has a quick in-ring where he basically you know, accepts Korn's challenge for, um, for Malice in Wonderland and says after... And says, uh, how, how would I go? After Malice in Wonderland, Cord, you'll be, be seen as the preening little silver spoon jackass you are. Um, I thought we had false count anywhere. I guess we don't. Well, it's basically no DQ, so I'll just... Uh, huh, that's interesting. I really thought it was in here. Oh, well. Um, I'll just, yeah, put it as a one one match, and we'll just have to remember about that anyway. It's going to be J Cord versus Mighty Mo. Then we move on, uh, where Joshua Taylor waits his opponent, and that opponent turns out to be Nate Johnson. And this is a 63. So again, back and forth match, but uh, in the end, Joshua Taylor, I mean, Nate Johnson tries the... The mistake that Nate Johnson makes is he tries to out-wrestle Joshua Taylor, so they're on. They're basically you know on the mat, but jo- Taylor's able to reverse Johnson's attempt at a submission and lock him in the butterfly lock right in the middle of the ring, or nowhere for Johnson to go. He has to tap out at 6.32. Uh, this match gets a 75, Taylor gets a 72, Nate Johnson gets a 55, and then Taylor has a quick in-ring promo as Will Hawkins comes out, announces that their match at Malice in Wonderland will be a submission match. So if we go here... Uh, where is it? Yeah. Let's go ahead. And we make this a, where is it? So it's going to be Taylor versus Will Hawkins with a submission match. So somebody will have to actually submit to prove who's the actual better in-room wrestler. And the throwing gets a 70. Good stuff. And then, in a about that detraction run with the crowd, but terrible wrestling, Mark Speed, our current uh, international champion, defeats Giant Tannen 926 by submission with a cross arm breaker. This gets a 62. Speed gets a 56. Giant Tonic gets a 55. Um, and, you know, just, you know, Tonic gets some good hope spots in, but Speed, you know, out wrestles them and locks in the cross arm breaker, so Tonic quickly taps out. But Speed keeps the hold on, as, you know, as Speed keeps the hold on, Benson makes a save, breaking it apart, and there's, sta- and there's a standoff between them both. And that gets a 54. Then we have a rocking golden promo put over putting over his match tonight versus Troy Tornado, saying he's had wars with Tornado before, and he'll, he'll prove that why he deserves this title shot tonight, and why TCW will soon be in a golden era once again. And this is a 76. Then we have the actual match, where, where which is an 80 and probably gonna be better than our main event. Keep on forgetting, just put your main eventers who are really over, like Rocky, in the main event, even if it's in it versus a upper mid card, mid card, it's better than your like actual big match, but hey, stuff happens. And he bought that great heat and good wrestling. Rocky Golden feeds Free Tornado in 1140 by pinfall of Rocky Road. This gets an 80. Rocky gets an 85. Tornado gets a 64. Solid stuff. And then Golden Celebrant gets a 67. And then uh, Cord is Mighty Moe's backstage. We're now nowhere. Jake Cord attacks him, uh, sends him into like, you know, some random stuff in the ring. And then basically he says, thanks for the heads up. The juice up in the match, you could have waited a little bit, but now I get I get to take you out now. Ha <laughs> ha. And yeah, because Gord's a snivelly, whiny, evil heel. And this gets a 56. And now it's main event time. As okay, this actually good stuff. As in an 82 match, 
Brian Vesey and Aaron Andrews defeat Benny Benson and Sadie Bach in 2010 when Andrew, Aaron Andrews pinned Benny Benson with an aces high. Big win for Andrews um, as Bach gets a 79, Benson gets a 63, Andrews gets a 75, and Vesey gets a 75. And the show ends with Andrews holding the title belt up to Rocky, who had come out to ringside near the end of the match. And this gets a 73, and the show itself finishes with an 80. So good stuff. So we'll go ahead and let's see. As this loads, let's see what happened with that. Survey says, as this all loads up, okay, so let's see if there's anything interesting mail. Um, nope, okay. Okay, so 0 0.089, okay, so ratings actually went up a little bit, good stuff. Um, so I'll be back in a second with the final total wrestling um, of this video and, you know, go over the final match card for the pay-per-view. So I'll be back with you in just a moment. Okay, folks, time for the go-home show of Total Wrestling, as it's um, a couple of nights before Malice in Wonderland, so we get the rest of the show set up, and do have some final hype, so let's get rolling. So we start with basically RDG and American Buffalo Brawling, with Floyd Gore in the background telling RDG that he's going to rue the day that he ever got involved with American Buffalo, and Buffalo is going to take him, send him to the retirement home where he belongs, as these two men brawl in the backstage, before TCW officials finally like, break him apart, and this gets a 68. Then we have, you know, basically the announcers putting over that there's a big main event tonight as Rocky Golden will team up with Joshua Taylor, take on Wolf Hawkins and Aaron Andrews, and that gets a 71. Uh, then we have about had a decent reaction of the crowd, but Subpaw Wrestling, Human Arsenal defeated Freddie Huggins in 1336 by pinball with an ammo dump, and that gets a 64. Arsenal gets a 61. Huggins gets a 54. And then we have a promo where basically Arsenal challenges Hill to a match at Malice. Hill comes out and says, why should I face you? And, he'll sit, and Arsenal puts the challenge out. The winner will control the other's career. So Arsenal's like, do you want me to dress up in a suit and wrestle with you in a tag match again? Fine. But you gotta put up the same for me. And Brent Hill agrees, and there you go. So not exactly like the biggest match, but a solid like undercard match, and also like sort of a final blow off for these guys, like long uh, post paper, you know, post uh, significant feud. 55 again because you know these guys are the greatest talkers in the world uh, but let's continue on to uh backstage promo where basically we have jasmine sanders who stands with Haley buck who's a you know young woman who's a good looking woman charismatic and she announces that she's here in total championship wrestling and she has a new client debuting in tcw at miles of wonder that's what what a big deal that her client is that she will debut on pay-per-view not in front of these pathetic salem um idiots okay that was bad at the end but you you get the point and let's recap that gimmick change and okay so she's not going to wrestle so win losses don't matter but great gimmick so that's good and yeah Haley buck makes her debut here in tcw and she'll be managing somebody at Malice in wonderland uh then in an abysmal match titan killed brendan idol in 402 with a titanic choke slam and really only reason to go shorter is basically Titan was playing with his food food and the end Titan just kills Idol and this gets a 27, Titan gets a 47, Idol gets a 26. And then you know Behemoths are looking scary when they're challenged by Divine Fortune for the pay-per-view for the tag titles and Behemoths just say your funeral. So again setting that up officially as it's our tag teams of Divine Fortune taking on the Behemoths. with the world tag team titles on the line. I know, I'll figure that out later. And the showdown itself gets a 60, so solid stuff. Uh, then we have an Andrews and Hawkins backstage promo where they'd be basically, you know, they're, they're going to work together tonight, but you know, Hawkins just, you know, remember I'm the head of the syndicate and I wrestled Rocky Golden before and actually pinned him. Andrews like, well, I'm in the actual main event. Well, you're stuck wrestling Joshua Taylor in a submission match. You know, you're, you're stuck wrestling a guy who was right in Japan a couple of years ago. Well, I was at Rookie only a couple of years ago. No, I'm the ace. So why don't you follow my lead? And they start there and Rocky just was well, like, well, come on. Let's not do this. Let's just agree. We're going to destroy Golden's myth of a golden era and I'll rip apart Taylor. Okay, and, and Andrews is like, fine, just don't get in the way when I'm about to go aces, aces high. 76, all promo for both these guys. And then, uh, you know, 
Crowd Pop as the new wave are back, and they're now in action. So this gets a 57. And after a couple weeks off of you know getting destroyed by the Behemoths, the in a poor match, the new wave make the return to the ring to be Matt Hawking and Dazzling, Dazzling Dave Diamond in 26 when Scout pinned Dazzling Dave Diamond with a wave of mutilation. This gets a 67. DDD gets a 55, Hawking gets a 52, Guy gets a 70, and Scout gets a 60. And then you new, new celebrate afterwards to a 55. So, you know, just get them back, you know, on TV to rent the fans that they're around. And so they're around for the pay-per-view if need be. And then in a bath out of good heat and decent wrestling, Brian Vesey defeated Danny Fonzarelli in 1237 by submission. This gets a 75. As Brian Vesey gets a 73, Danny Fonzarelli gets a 60, and they have good chemistry. So that's good. And then... Uh, there's a Vessi back showdown where Bach comes down basically before Vessi can even keep the hold on. You know, Bach says, you know, you, Vessi, you always talk about being some in-ring master. Well, I beat you before, and I'll beat you again, because I may not look like it, but I'm a talented wrestler, and then I can go and party all night. Vessi's like, I'll, I'll snap your leg so none of the, your groupies will be able to, and none of your groupies will be able to help you after that. And 71, decent promo as we continue on where Mark Speed promises to make Benson tap at the pay-per-view, which will also add that match officially. The international title. And then Eddie Peak is still in the bowels of the arena, searching for something, but we're not sure what. This gets a 61. And then it's main event time. So the match gets an 80, um, and about that great heat and good wrestling, Rocky Golden and Joshua Taylor drew with Wolhoff, Hulf Hawkins, and Aaron Andrews in 30 minutes when the time lag expires. So back and forth match, great match, everybody gets their big moves in, everybody you know, gets, gets a near fall, but it, you know, we got saves, we got double teams, we got Rocky Golden in the Rocky Road, Joshua Taylor locking the butterfly lock, Will Hawkins in the both it, Andrews even even hitting the aces high on Golden, but Golden gets gets his foot on the ropes. Golden comes back and hits you know, a big move on Andrews, but Andrews slips out. But in the end, the bell rings, you know, after 30 minutes. So the, this gets an 80. Taylor gets a 70. Golden gets an 86. Andrews gets a 73. Hawkins gets an 80. And let me see what's, what was the actual the downside to here. Uh, inconsistency and okay. And then the end of the show. Oh well, okay, that's not the end of the world. Uh, basically, it was a four-way showdown between everybody, you know, as Hawkins and Taylor argue, Andrews and Golden Taylor, and there you go. Uh, did I, I probably forgot to mark people on entertainment. Oh, well, not the end of the world. As the show itself gives us a 76. Good stuff. So we'll see. Um, if there's anything interesting in the mail, then we'll go over the pay-per-view, and then that'll be the video for today. All right, and email-wise, okay, so nothing interesting. So yeah, just go over things as far as our pre-booking. Main event is, of course, Rocky Golden versus Aaron Andrews for the DCW World Heavyweight Championship. Right below that is Wolf Hawkins versus Joshua Taylor in a submission match to determine who is really the best wrestler in DCW. As far as technical skill, we got Singing Back and Brian Vesey in continuation of their feud. We've got uh, RGJ versus American Buffalo as RJ is now back in the ring and ready to get revenge on American Buffalo for taking him out for a couple months. We've got Jake Cord versus Mighty Mo in a Falcon Anywhere match, uh, where the winner, will, where, where this match cannot happen again in 2016, so no matter how successful the other one gets, they'll be stuck out of the picture, you know, if you know if Jake Cord wins, say, the international title, Mighty Mo can't get a title shot, and vice versa. Um, then we also have Human Arsenal versus Brent Hill, where again, the winner will, will control the other's contract, we got a tag title match as the Bemis will face Divine Fortune, and Mark Speed will face up Brandon e. Benson for the international title. Um, but, you know, and of course there will be probably other matches, but I haven't built them at all. But we'll see, you know, we'll see, we'll see that when the actual time for the actual show. Um, but that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this. Go ahead and give it a like if you enjoyed it. Go comment below on what you're liking and not liking. And subscribe to your channel for lots of TW 2020 content, including, you know, I guess these are Cornelvers Weekends, where I've got both this and my Cornelvers 1997 East Coast 4 series. Uh, I've got my WCW 2001 series, um, you know, now and how, now right after Halloween Havoc 2003 as the Mayhem Tournament begins. WCW 1983 with no Eric Bischoff. Um, LW now in 2005 with a broken, with Deep Green with a broken leg and Loki as my champion. And Women's Revolution in 2010. But that's it for now, so I'll talk to you later and adios.